Hey YouTube, it's Adrian. Just before we get you to this video, do me a favor and head over to pageantlaunch.com. We are starting the world's first dedicated pageant review site, and I would love for you to join our launch team. All you need to do is put in your email address. It's completely free. We are looking to make a pageant industry that is safe, transparent, and fair. I know it's like that most of the time, but over the last year, it's become very evident that it's not like that all of the time. So head over to pageantlaunch.com, put in your email address, and let's get you to this. Oh Why don't you get Emma to do it, Adrian? Uh, hi. Okay, I we're live up. now, um, I think. I messed the ending up so bad yesterday. You messed the ending up, the stop streaming button. Hey everyone, it's Adrian from The Pageant Project. One day I'll come up with a better way of introducing myself. Um, but we have, this is uh, PPJ, it's number 15. In total, I think we've done 17. Um, our special guest, well, we have two special guests, but I'll introduce the one over in the UK first, is Chloe Adkin, who was unwell last time. Chloe, how are you going? I'm feeling so much better now, so I'm all good. I've had a week off because it's been half term, so I'm all refreshed and ready. Sounds good. How's um, Galaxy Prep going? Oh, you, you put up a... Um, you're doing a prize raffle, aren't you, as well? I yeah. saw it on Facebook. Yeah, it's sort of linked with the PJ party, which is this Friday. Um, but now we're doing... <laughs> Daniel's <laughs> after. Now we're doing the um, raffle side as well. So we've got some amazing prizes from Earring Envy, Sparkling Rhinestones and Charlotte Clemmy. And then we've just chucked in a few little bits as well. So that's mm. up if anyone wants to take part. That would be great. When is the... Um... Did you say there's a ball? I forget. I see so many events. Are you running a ball, or you you've run a you've already no, run I one, haven't you? a ball. That was yeah. in October. That's right. But now it's the pageant PJ party, and it's on Friday. Right. Um, Pad- very close now, but it's all it's all ready to go. So no stress. It's all under control. <laughs> it's all under control. Everything's prepared. <laughs> the only thing I need to sort out is when I can get in the to the venue in the room. I right. rang the hotel and I'm just waiting for confirmation. Okay. But apart from that, everything's everything's ready and done. And if people want to take part in the raffle, how do they do it? Get in contact with you? So it's Yeah, so it's just on the Facebook post. You basically just pick a number. It's five pound a number or three numbers for ten pounds. Um and then we'll draw it as soon as all the numbers are full. And then you, we'll just either meet you at an event or send the prize to you, whichever's easiest. Nice. Okay. Um, sounds good. And then our other <laughs> guest for today, since she's here anyway, I finally managed to convince her to get on the podcast, is Emma <laughs> Colley. I get confused because it's mirrored. It's Emma. <laughs> Miss, Miss Emma Colley. She's a to you. Huh? <laughs> like which way? Yeah, no, because it's mirrored. So I, this is my right hand, but it's going that way. So I'm very. She's still going to be but next still, to you. You still just put the person that is sitting next to you. I know. I haven't completely woken up yet. All right. So Emma, welcome to the show. And how are you going? <laughs> Good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, oh, Emma God, it's has... so weird interviewing someone that's sitting next to you. I know, but I don't know whether to look at her or to look there, but Emma has this, because I, I keep saying, how are you going now? And she hates that phrase. And we talked about this a bit yesterday. Do you want to tell everyone watching why you hate the phrase, how are you going? I don't hate it. It just doesn't really make sense. Like It doesn't. It's like, where It doesn't make sense. Are exactly. Are yeah. Yeah. How's it going? It's like going where? Okay, so yeah, I'm okay. I'm just, not going anywhere, but I'm good. Why don't you just, just say how are you? Yeah. Because it's a very Australian yeah. saying. So if you see me in the UK and I ask you how are you going, it means how are you? People are gonna like We're yeah, gonna I'm... be like, um, I'm going to rehearsals. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't um, that be well, that would be where are you going business? though, wouldn't it? Where are you no, going? But how are you going? Like it yeah. just sounds like you were, you were going to ask. I'd be like, 
I'm going like this. Yeah. I'm going to robot. That's how yeah, I'm going. It sounds like you haven't finished <laughs> the sentence. Like, how are you going to rehearsal? Well, that means like, how are you going? I guess the answer would be like by car or by foot. If you mm. actually ask someone, yeah. how are they going? Yeah. I'm driving, thanks. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Um, so aside from that, how how are you going? <laughs> well, how are you? <laughs> oh God, I'm very oh, well. Yeah. Are we all jet lagged on this podcast? Because we all seem to be going a bit crazy. Uh, we we had a couple of um, nights without much sleep, and I think we're just kind of catching up. I'm also trying to slowly bring myself off coffee because I was having too many, so I've only had one, and normally I start the morning with two. So my brain hasn't fully kicked in yet. Um, and Emma is not really a morning person at all. You found that out the hard way. Yeah. yeah. The, um, the, the, grumpy, <laughs> the, the grumpy dragon comes out. Um, anyway, I'll, I'll leave Emma alone so she can eat more of her banana bread. Uh, obviously, we've got Lauren and Daniel. Lauren, why don't we start with you? You just got back from Thailand. So firstly, welcome back. Secondly, do you have any corona? And thirdly, how are you going? <laughs> Um, so that was too many questions in one. My brain can't function. Um, Welcome I back. Yesterday, right? Six a.m. My mum and Chloe Lake's mother Lynn picked me up from the airport, which was good to see them both. My two mothers picking me up. Um, slept all day. Went to work today. So far, I don't think I've got coronavirus. Um, I'm not feeling any of the side like the symptoms at all. I did. I didn't really take public transport in Thailand though to be exposed to it. Well, I suppose say that anyone could have it. Um, but yeah, I had fun. And did you ask another question? Was that it? Well, how does it <laughs> how does it feel to be back in the UK? Because that's something uh, that Emma's uh, going to have to deal with in about two weeks. Yeah. Not looking forward to I it. I hate it. I really, really hate it. <laughs> like, I was in like a little pageant bubble and thailand bubble and then mm. i feel like the air hostess has just gone and burst it and it's all over you did get some epic actually... um you got some epic shots though some epic photos oh, i yeah. saw them yeah mm. yeah really well that was hard work it was like 8 a.m until 10 p.m and I was... oh so hard <laughs> It was though because we were Being like glamorous people. all damn day. It was tiring, especially in the heat. I at one point I was like, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna faint, <laughs> faint like a beauty queen. <laughs> but we we got onto like it was funny though because we got onto this like boat to take us to the Temple of Dawn, which is just across the river. So it's like a short little boat ride. Oh wow! And they're like, quick, quick, pose, pose, and I'm now like like posing and everyone's there video of me thinking i'm some sort of celeb i'm like i'm all right i'm in like nike trainers and a dress i'm like it's fine were you posing like this because you were fainting from the heat no because the sun was in my eyes and my eyes are really sensitive to the sun <laughs> oh no um wow okay so it's got to be weird being back i mean and i'm i'm just thinking now i'm going to be over there in a couple of weeks yeah I think all. that's Galaxy is the only thing like keeping me going now. It's like I had something to look forward to, that's over and done with. Mm. Now it's like Galaxy to look forward to in that weekend of seeing everyone again. So I'm really, really excited to see everyone and give everyone a big squeeze. I think I think you always have to have something in life to look forward to. That's what yeah. I was saying to Emma. Like when she gets back, she needs to have something, get planned. something planned. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll swap over to Danielle because Danielle, obviously, you've done a lot of traveling. So you've always yeah. got something lined up, don't you? Pretty much. So obviously, a week of work. And then Friday night was Miss Great Britain. Mm -hmm. uh, Miss and uh, Miss Great Britain, Miss, first yeah. ever Miss. And it was the 75th anniversary for that. So I think it's actually the longest running pageant in the UK, I believe. Um, so we went to that, went to the after party afterwards, hung out with Chloe there and her mom. Um, <laughs> yeah, we had a good time there. And then, so I prior arranged to stay at my <laughs> uncle and auntie's house. Here we go. My auntie said so she was going to leave the key out for me. Okay, great. So my uncle and auntie's house is right next to my grandma's house. 
And so, okay, she left the key out for me. I go, I went to the Uncle and Auntie's house, and I usually stay there. The door is locked. There's, you know, I'm checking all the plant pots. There's no key. I think, okay, well, maybe she's left, you know, she wants me to stay at Grandma's. So I'll go, I'll go over to Nan's. The door's locked. No key anywhere. And thinking, okay, what did she say? What did she say to me? Is she going to leave the keys in the slippers or is she going to leave the keys in the plant pots? So I go around to the back to my auntie's, check again. Door is still not opening, and she usually leaves that door open and the keys in the slippers. Oh, I'm just telling the world this. I was <laughs> just <laughs> going to we say. You don't know where she lives. You don't know yeah, where she lives. Yeah. <laughs> no one goes to my auntie and find out where they live. She just maybe auntie change what she find... does. <laughs> yeah, we need to find a new place to store the keys. Um... <laughs> um, so I can get in. This is four o'clock in the morning. And so I, I end up sli sleeping in my car. I, um, which yeah. is horrible. But did you actually find out where the key was in the end? Well, apparently the, the front door was open and the keys were in the slippers. But I couldn't get the door open. But apparently it's a, like a sticky door. But I, it was pretty darn sticky. I yanked on it for ages. So I was going to oh, wake them up by wake pulling them on up? it. I would because been... it was four o'clock in the morning and like that's a really dodgy time to wake someone up because that's it you're awake then for the day or but it's, like, it's like an emergency not really because i could i'm I sure slept in I'm my sure car you're... yeah i suppose but it wasn't I, very I would be like, it was let me in <laughs> especially if you had a few tequila shots in you and also i know that their bedroom was like well they're still here at the doorbell i'm sure but their their bedroom is towards the back of the house i'm telling the world this about my auntie said they're gonna have to move house soon I would um, be like throwing stones if they didn't answer the door. <laughs> but they wouldn't be able to hear it because they're like at the back um so yeah i'm very <laughs> no. fortunate that i kept a blanket in my car i always keep a blanket in my car just you know, just so my passengers can be comfortable and warm. Uh, it kept being warm that you night. Pad, you need an emergency pageant kit. Every pageant girl needs it in case this happens. So you need a blanket, a pillow, makeup remover, toothbrush, mm -hmm. toothpaste. In a car. <laughs> yeah. Well, I did. I did have my weekend bag with me, so I, I. There we go. Put my PJs on, and then. I tried laying back in the driver's seat, but I can't. I can't sleep like that. So I, I had the smallest car in the world, you guys. Like, not it's not a um, a smart car, but it's like basically one up from a smart car. So I was in the fetal position with a silky gold blanket over me, wearing tartan pajamas. And then my auntie woke me up at half nine in the morning when she saw the car was on the drive, but realised I weren't in the house. Yeah. You had yeah, that actually offered you my room as well, didn't I? I you like, had offered me, to, and I was like, no, no, it's fine. My uncle and auntie are expecting me. And yeah, I could have stayed with you. I could have stayed in Laurie's room. I could have stayed in Felicia's room. I could have, <laughs> loads of people were offering me places to stay that night. But I just so happened to end up sleeping in my car. It so, was fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's an the next experience. Day, the next so. day was a complete write-off. I was emotionally scarred. Um, so I just st went back to bed with a hot water bottle and drank my weight in tea. Um, I was supposed to go to Royal, but I was just like, absolutely not. I'm too drained. Yeah. Um, mm. That was my Saturday. And that was nice to hang out with my aunt as well. And then my Sunday, what did I do Sunday? Oh, run. yes, I drove to Manchester. And I did my run. So I went from, went up to Leicester, to Nottingham, to Manchester, did the 5K run. And that was amazing. If anyone wants, like, if they do it again, it was originally the Santa Dash, then it turned to the Frosty Run. Highly recommend everyone getting onto it when they have another run. Get onto it. It's just great, great fun. Um, and then drive home. And a four-hour drive home. That was my weekend. That sounds like a very eventful weekend. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was like, it was like to... urban camping, I called it. <laughs> <laughs> Dear me. Well, I guess at least you had a blanket. What what yeah. was the temperature on that night, just out of interest? Really like minus hundred. I mean the temperature dial, I don't think I even have a temperature dial in my car. So well, neither do I. I don't know. I'm very I, when I 
thing is when I drive, I drive with the heating blaster. Anyone that knows me, I'm always cold. So I was blasting the heating from the hour drive from Leicester to Nottingham. So my car mm. was pretty warm anyway by the time I got to my destination. So, But, but I was in a gown as well. So I was like flitting <laughs> between the two houses in my gown. And those that saw my gown is very tight at the bottom. So I was like waddling. And then there was loads of mud at the bottom of my nan's drive. <laughs> amazing in that black gown can i just say thanks babes and yeah I, that it's completely it's, it's here somewhere i probably should actually know i've thrown it in the washing bin it's completely soiled in mud oh no yeah it's fine it's, it's machine washable i just have this image of you if, if someone was watching from the outside watching you daniel waddling in your gown as you said from door to door <laughs> looking in flower pots and slippers and trying to get the door open it would have been quite a and, sight and, and that's not the, the worst thing i needed i needed the bathroom too <laughs> <laughs> oh my i'll leave it i'll leave that there <laughs> The story is going from bad to worse. Done okay. I've done what people do when they go camping. <laughs> Have any camping. of you actually done that, though? Because people talk about, like, school people talk about camping these days, and it's in a building. It's not even in a tent, and they actually have toilets. That's not, to me, camping. camping. When I went camping I'm, in school, you I've had to dig a trench. I've outside before. Is that anything to do huh? with camping? But, like... <laughs> No, but I've never been camping. I never will be camping, like go camping. It's not my thing. But I've had to pee outdoors before. <laughs> I think we've all peed outdoors at some point yeah. in our lives. I'm sure it would be the same as going camping, peeing outdoors, wouldn't it? There's more to camping I mean, than simply relieving oneself outside. Well, I slept in a tent in a <laughs> festival before. That wasn't fun. That's camping. So okay. That's camping, yeah. I hated it. <laughs> That that's kind of camping. I, I I don't I don't know if we should be talking about peeing outside anymore. I think the details are, <laughs> are best. <laughs> well, yes, yes, I'm sure that we all have. Um, I'm just Emma, do you want to tell? <laughs> there might be other things in your life you want to share other than the fact that you have peed outside. But thank you. Um, I'm going to get Emma Comment to tell us what she's been up it. to. Comment below if you peed outside. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> um, I'll oh, get... where, have, where have you peed? <laughs> you see how this goes. Oh, dear me. I'll, I'll get Emma to catch you guys up with what she's been up to in Australia. Obviously, I know. But um, you guys may not, or the oh, people wow. watching may not. So do you want to revise quickly your, your Australian do I trip go? to the very beginning? Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> so, the beginning of January, I came into Perth and was then staying with my galaxy twin, Alicia, who was Miss Galaxy Australia. Stayed with her for the week, went on several little adventures, got chased by kangaroos. <laughs> um, then came over to Sydney and stayed with um, some other really good friends of mine that I've known for Yes, um, Jazzy and Gabina, and they took me literally everywhere. Um, Blue Mountains, Opera House. Canberra. Canberra, yeah. <laughs> Off a nice 3 a.m. start. Um, yes. then, came, then went to Melbourne with you. We were in Melbourne for five days. Died of heat tennis. stroke. We got heat stroke. Um, we also saw the tennis. Yeah, also saw the tennis, but we got heat stroke. Cut the bottom of my like foot. Yeah. Yeah, cut the bottom of my foot on. Ow. Do you want to tell everyone your story as to how you cut your foot? How? See, Daniel wants to know. Tell everyone how story, you cut your foot. Story. <laughs> Which one? You can't. You don't start by saying that. <laughs> I'm confused. I don't know if we're going Wait, with the story. Which, which story or which foot? No, no, no. Um, which story do you guys want? The exciting one or the tra like the tragically boring one? The truth. <laughs> you want the truth. You both <laughs> well, if you want the truth, that's probably easier to tell. What? Tell them the truth. <laughs> we were in this Airbnb and you had this toy hippo in your room. No, I had a toy hippo in my room and I went to go and get it. And in the process of doing so, stepped on a plastic snowflake fairy light cover. Oh, wait, what? 
why was there a plastic snowflake? It's not Christmas. It was still quite Christmassy. They still had this big like wreath of baubles up and so there were fairy lights, snowflake sort of things. And one of the like covers fell off when I was pulling across the curtains and I stepped on it and it went in my foot. Ugh. So that was fun. <laughs> Slice by a snowflake. Oh. Did you mean stick? Yeah. Uh, no, it was deeper than I thought it was. And we then went to a whole load of beaches and walked around yeah. the city. It wasn't loads. that bad, except if you imagine you've got a little cut on your foot and then you pour salt water on it because you're mm. in the ocean and you walk and you walk on sand because that's also at the beach. It's probably not the best way to treat a little cut. So No, so it took a while to heal. Yeah. yeah. And then came to Sydney, been in Sydney for about a month. And how have you found Sydney? I love Sydney. I swear I'm going to live here someday. When are you coming she's home? Got a... <laughs> Never. Don't, <laughs> say, you, you sound like don't a say that. You're... No, like, because I thought, well, how long are you there for? Like, no, you, no, no, because don't say never. I'm telling, <laughs> yeah, I'm telling Emma not to say never because both her, her parents and now her partner are following, your, your, um, Ed is following me on Instagram now. And <laughs> if she says something like that, they're all going to freak that she's not coming back. And the best part is they're all going to blame me because <laughs> the other day she said she's not coming back and your mum said I'd like my daughter back. And I said I'd just send my cat instead. And I think her mum <laughs> didn't really realise that I was joking. So <laughs> she like said, I, I don't want that happened. cat. I want my daughter back. <laughs> yeah, so don't tell them you're never going okay. back because they're gonna they're gonna blame me. Yeah. Okay. So I leave Sydney on Friday. So it's my last few days on in Sydney. Saturday. Oh, that's sad. Oh Stay yeah, Saturday. There. Saturday. <laughs> She's already extended. Oh, okay. You've yeah, extended so your I was, stay for. A I week. was meant to be flying back to the UK on Saturday, but I've extended my trip by like another nine days. So I'm now going up to Brisbane and then going to the Gold Coast with Alicia because Alicia's coming over here on Wednesday. Alicia Van Schoenhoven. Yes. And then after, the, <laughs> after Friday, well, Thursday night, you'll probably just extend it again for a little bit longer. Well, she does have a UK. Ready. She's now only flying. She's now flying to the UK only a couple of days before myself. At this rate, I was gonna, yeah. she could get there Let's after I will. Yeah. And then come home with Adrian. I'll pick you both up from the airport. You both go to Lauren's dentist. Don't, 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 don't tempt her. She will. This uh, trip has already been extended. Him. It was meant to be like a three week trip. And then it got extended to like a five week trip. And then when I came out here, it was at a seven week trip. And since I've been out here, it's been extended to like an eight and a half, nine week trip. So. You're literally there it's, I mean, just long enough so you can go home, pack your bag for Galaxy, and then go to Galaxy and hand over. Yeah, <laughs> when, yeah when pretty does much. When immigration kick you out of the country? Like, how long do you have? <laughs> Three months. Oh, Three, Three months. months. <laughs> Do you have an Emma Collingbridge here? <laughs> they don't know that she's here. Well, I guess maybe they know now because she's here. But again, no one, same as Danielle, no one knows where I live. So it's all good. Yeah. The visa, you can stay for three months at a time, as long as you want in 12 months. Okay. All right. Um, so <laughs> on that note, when are you getting back to the UK? I land on the 9th of March. 9th of March and it all kicks off on the 13th and then I'm flying in on the 12th I think Lauren is that right I can't remember what I told you I've got yeah, it somewhere but Thursday I can't Thursday the 12th and then we're going to your dentist I can even pick you up because I'm going to be up there from the 11th if you want to I mean I'm I'm flying into what Man Manchester airport mm -hmm. I mean I'm at the park hall from the 11th from Wednesday I'll be okay. Around. I mean, I am, I am flying in. I think super early, but I would, wouldn't. I imagine I wouldn't get out until about eight a.m. at the earliest. I think I'm flying in at six fifty a.m. So, yeah, so by I mean, the time you've gone through, <coughs> it was pretty busy this time as well. Manchester is smaller than Heathrow, though, right? Yeah. Oh God, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I've been through Heathrow a couple about, of times. It took me about forty or fifty minutes to go through once I landed. Uh, that that's not bad, but then again, you're a returning you're a returning citizen. I'm I'm coming in from overseas, so I might be a little bit longer. But 
yeah daniel I'll, I'll i'll send you the flight details and then if you if you think you'll be up at that time then i get to see your tiny tiny car sooner than <laughs> i thought i'll wash the, the blanket blood. <laughs> i'm hoping i won't need the blanket although coming from 45 degrees here going to there i the might need, the, need i'll the need the more than the blanket yeah, though. So my mum came with a, a ja another jacket for me because she knew that my oh. jacket wasn't enough the last time she had a blanket for me so i felt really really oh. lucky but this time it was just a jacket and i was like thank you <laughs> maybe i should drape myself in an australian flag or something to be appropriately patriotic <laughs> Um, just because we are talking about Galaxy, Chloe, how are your um, Galaxy preparations going? And whilst you do that, I'm stealing Emma's banana bread. Hey. <laughs> um, really good. I mean, as we said previously, I've done all my appearance forms and I've gone along. So everything's in place. I'm just ready to compete now. I've pretty much done. There's a few more appearances to do, but the majority of mm. them, you know, they're all done. I'm just waiting for my PJ party and the raffle, and then that'll be my final fundraising. So I'm just ready to compete now. After watching Miss Great Britain and mm. IGM and watching all those girls, you know, compete for their title, it's just like, oh, when is it my turn? You know what I mean? Like waiting all the time, and oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. I'm getting, I'm getting like that as well. I said I keep describing it as a baby, and I feel nine <laughs> months pregnant right now. I'm like, come on, ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope well, it's a happy birth for you, Daniel. Will be fine. <laughs> um, <laughs> Natalie Pav has said that clearly I love Manchester, best city in the UK by a mile, but our airport is awful. Oh. That's good to yeah. know. And there's um, <laughs> road works on at the moment, so like so many roads are closed. Uh, that's the thing I, I i keep mentioning to emma and i think i've mentioned on the podcast last week you guys you absolutely are very unforgiving when it comes to slagging each other off in terms of where you come from and what that means and your different accents i've been going through all the different uk well, accents you guys have wales just... is, is you know more superior wales is up here Definitely, I, Danielle's face. I may, I may have heard a slightly different story Danielle, from some people to that, Lauren. You've represented Wales. You've got to, you've got to be with me on this. I mean, half of me, half of me, half of me's there, but uh, you the know, other half is very the far other, away. The other half of me is here, and currently, the whole of me is sat in England right now. So <laughs> get kicked out. Of the I, house. I don't. Like, how many accents do you think actually exist in the UK? So here's the oh, thing, because in Australia, oh. right, to give you an idea, Australia is physically the size of the United States, <laughs> and we only have really one accent. There are slight differences between the cities, but very, very slight. Mm -hmm. You guys in the UK, how many different accents can you name? The thing is, Adrian, even I can pinpoint whereabouts someone came from in London based on their accents. You've only got to go down the road, like a mile, and I will know whereabouts you are from. I'm like the weird, what's it, Professor Higgins from uh, My Fair Lady, where I like to listen to people's accents. I can tell if you're from Lewisham. I can tell if you're from Brixton. I can tell if you're from Chelsea. I can tell if you're from Tottenham. I know. <laughs> and that's, that's just London. A lot. Do you I know why there are so many different that... accents? Are you, are you counting the accents in Wales? The ones that I know of. Because it's like... Do they have names? Wales. No, not really, though. But, like, you can tell if someone's from, like, Bala or from, mm. like, Cardiff. The Swansea. You can tell if someone's from Swansea. Mm. They all I have could... different... And especially yeah. if they're from, like a welsh speaking town like um yeah. where's little eva and effa effa you know the little girls yeah their mum's claire wherever they're from their accent because they speak welsh as well it's just so yeah. so strong i'm like yeah, you've only got go a few miles and there's a different yeah. accent mm. it's like i live in mansfield but then work in rainwear and they speak completely different like, yeah. their accent is just so different. And I'm like, 
we're like hardly it's like a 10 10 minute drive and it already it's changes. similar but it's different like i think um like birmingham and birmingham. Sasha, Sasha, who competed in miss universe great britain mm. it's a similar accent but completely different at the same time it's so yeah. weird how, how it works out mm. there's got to be over a I don't think it's in the thousands, though, of accents in the UK, but definitely in the, yeah. in the hundreds. I'm just struggling, honestly, to think of any two pageant people that I know in the UK who have the same accent. Can you? Yeah. Can someone name me two pageant competitors from the UK that I would know that have the same accent? Well, me and Darcy, me and Darcy Davis, um, who's Miss Wrexham Galaxy, we're from the same okay. place. But yeah. I'm from Kirk and she's from Rose, and we're only about five minutes down the road, and her accent is different to mine. Yeah. And we literally live, I like go past where she lives to go to work. It's like all you guys just come up with your own accents, everyone's think, got their own individual <laughs> accent. I, I think it's not only your location, it's passed down through yeah. your ancestry, through your parents. Yeah. Yeah. Although saying that, I don't talk like my mum. I don't really talk like my dad, so I'm a little bit of both, I suppose. Wow. Okay. So UK Galaxy is going to be... I, I was going to try and be able to... <laughs> I was going to try and be able to identify at least what sort of accent every person had, had, but I think that's just a lost cause. Just well, yeah. We've been going around the zoo yesterday and there were like British tourists. I was trying to be like, do you know what that accent is? Do you know what that accent is? <laughs> well, you, pointed you, were... out, you pointed out I was too busy watching the animals. Yeah. Uh, not, not the British tourists, I don't mean that. I mean I was too busy <laughs> looking at the animals at the zoo. Um, and you said was it Yorkshire? Yeah. Yeah, there there are so many accents. I sort of what, sort of what did they I'm say? Kind of... What were they saying in the zoo? It was just about. I think we were looking at the snakes and the lizards and things, and it was just about them. We saw some big spiders. Oh. Uh... So we saw a bird eating spider at Taronga Zoo. So Taronga Zoo. That was Zoo honestly is... the size of my hand. Yeah, Taronga Zoo is kind of the oldest and most well-known zoo in in Australia, or certainly in Sydney. And there was a bird eating spider, which was rather large. Yeah. Um, there was a funnel web spider, which is a really really poisonous one that can bite through a leather boot. Oh fun! Um, and, and then, then there, there was... was a huge one outside of a cage. That wasn't that bad, that one. There <laughs> that was, was about the size of my fist. There was a reticulated python which can grow up to 10 meters long. That was fun. And it was just yeah. lying there. And then a Komodo dragon, yeah. which is poisonous. One of, that was just lying there like a giant dinosaur as well. Then there were alligators. Then there were actual dinosaurs because of the cassowary. That's literally like an actual dinosaur. Yeah. So if you like seeing interesting animals that, uh, that might be able to kill you, then come to Australia. We've got lots of them. <laughs> I don't need help in the case here. Yeah, but it's funny because Emma, like Emma, hasn't seen anything like in terms of snakes or spiders, all that mm -hmm. stuff that um, typically we'd say that you're going to be in sharks. She hasn't seen haven't any seen of those. Haven't seen a shark. Haven't seen a snake. I've seen a few really tiny spiders. House and then house the big spiders. one. But we get spiders over here though as well. No, the house spider. See what we call house spiders. You call daddy long legs. I do. <laughs> Well, when I was staying with Jazzy legs. and Gabina, yeah, when I was staying with Jazzy and Gabina, mm. they were like, oh yeah, they're daddy long legs everywhere. And I was expecting them to be flying around and they weren't. Daddy was... long legs fly? Yeah, I think yeah. it's a crane fly or something. Crane fly, yeah. It's not an actual spider. Oh. So daddy long I'm legs confused. are the, one of the most poisonous spiders. They just don't have fangs. That's an interesting fact. Mm. Um, no, around around where I live, we don't have daddy long legs. We have huntsmen's. Those are the flattened, hairy ones. Oh, the one that yeah. I found in my, the one that yeah. I found in my coffee oh. mug. That was a huntsman. That hairy one that shriveled up after I boiled it. The ones that could be massive. No, they're not poisonous. They're just hairy and quite. Okay. They're quite big. So, they may be. If you look at their legs, it could be a couple of inches across. Um, but they're they're harmless. They they can't. Isn't it the bigger the spider, the less dangerous it is? Well, then why were you so afraid of the bird spider? Because it eats birds. <laughs> it only eats small birds, not big ones. Um, that's not strictly true. The funnel web is ra rather big, and that's one of the most poisonous mm. ones. So, <laughs> Anyway, that, that's Australia for you. 
so um Danielle, if you're coming out here, you have something to look forward to. Yeah, like I'm it, actually, it, I'm excited by the wildlife, actually. I'm not really scared of stuff like that, so bring it on. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I did wake up on my first morning in Perth, though, feeling like I'd been transported into some kind of Jurassic Park movie because <laughs> the sounds of the birds yeah, are I just so they, different. They, I can hear yeah, the Daniel birds. Said they it's sound a pterodactyl. like pterodactyls. Yeah. yeah so that so that so emma's had she's not crazy about birds so she, she's heard the kookaburra that one that laughs she says that sounds scary. sounds evil it's like it's scheming okay and then the cockatoo <laughs> which you say looks like a, a dragon a dragon the way that it swoops and flies and it just screams it goes around screaming so if yeah <laughs> cockatoos literally would just scream at you and they've got that you know that, that those are the ones that have the crest on their head and when they see you they're not afraid of you they really they, they'll you can go right up to them and, and they're huge and yeah they're probably a foot big and they're very strong muscular birds and they would just scream at you so i will say if you don't like birds in australia i think that's more of a problem probably than spiders you haven't seen yeah, any spiders seen any but spiders. you've seen birds everywhere and the ibis freaks me out a little bit oh bin chickens bin chickens what so we have chicken. these birds it's called an ibis so we have i'll see if i can but i like calling it a bin chicken because it's funnier um but if you like your wildlife then australia certainly i don't think is going to disappoint they also look like dinosaurs um so <laughs> an ibis are these just like roaming around free everywhere yeah every green space you'll see a bin chicken a bin chicken um, and they're big as well but I think they're more scared of you than like a cockatoo would be. An ibis. So this, hang on, I've got an ibis here. Sorry, the internet's really small today. Slow today. That's an ibis. Oh yeah. Mm. So it's got a long body. It's got a big hooked uh, beak, and its head is bald. And then it's got these bald, long black legs, and they like to pick. They they like to use their beak to pick. Um, stuff out of the garbage bins they're not uh, the prettiest looking they birds like they look really prehistoric yeah oh no we, well, we oh, actually have pigeons yeah. as well oh god so. even more birds i had an and image a of just chicken here. sitting in a bin and i thought that was hilarious <laughs> <laughs> not quite as cute as that <laughs> yeah, um, but cute. yeah i wouldn't mind those if they just sat there happily in a bin if you if you love wildlife, Daniel, then I don't think Australia is, is going to disappoint. Um, so we should have fun with that. Okay, so UK Galaxy coming up. I think we've talked about UK Chloe, Galaxy Chloe, quite a lot. Chloe, have you got everything in terms of outfits, wardrobe? Yes, I'm just waiting for my swimwear to arrive and then everything's ready to go. But I don't know which, which fashion wear to wear. <laughs> I did say this is not a bad problem to have, Chloe. <laughs> I know, but I like to be so organised and know what's going on, and I'm a bit like waiting. Waiting for training with Maria to see what she thinks is best and then go from there, because they're, they're completely different. So... You've got to go for the one that you feel most comfortable in as well, mm. the one that you would feel you could perform your best in. Yeah. Yes, because at the end of the day, like outfits, I feel don't really matter as much as long as the girl in the outfit mm. is confident on stage and is ha having an amazing time. Yeah. Like, yeah. the one thing I always say as well, like, if your outfit is maybe lower cut or something like that and you're not fully comfortable with it and you're mm. feeling bit self-conscious whether something could pop out or anything like that just make sure that yeah. everything's yeah, fitting yeah. properly and you're able to walk with that confidence knowing that your outfit is completely secure and safe and it nothing's gonna fly off or you know it's got to be something yeah. that you feel and i think that's why a lot i remember when we went to galaxy internationals and onyx had a sarong and she didn't feel comfortable carrying it on stage so backstage she was like i'm not going to use it and she went on stage and just she walked far better without the sarong than she did yeah. with it that's yeah. why i would chose like i didn't want a sarong it's just so much easier it's less something less to think about yeah 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 agreed yeah so chloe you've got a couple of um when is your training with maria this saturday so my pj party on the friday 
and then um, training with Maria on Saturday. We're both going to be um, there at the so same time. So I'm going to be at Chloe's PJ party, which I still need to buy a ticket. I'm going to buy my ticket as soon as we come off of this. It's been payday now. I can now pay you. Um, but then I've got training with Maria on the same day as well. So. Oh, wow. So you guys will basically be following one another for those two days. <laughs> we follow each other around this weekend. Does anyone know when Maria's getting to the UK? The 20... Friday? 28th, yeah. 28th. On the 27th. Wow. Yeah, Friday. Okay. And where whereabouts is she staying? Is it Bolton? Yeah. I want to say Bolton. Is that near where Galaxy UK is going to be, or is that somewhere else? Yeah, it's not too far. I Like, well, for me, it's not going to be too far because I'm driving <laughs> hours up. But, um, yeah, mm -hmm. it's not too far from Manchester. Manchester's not too far from... Yeah, it's, like, on the out. To, yeah, like, scale it's a bit I've further been, north, yeah. I think. Is, is that where Maria is staying for UK Galaxy, or is she going to move somewhere no, else I'm for UK? Oh, okay, right. Closer. Okay, so um, is she still Airbnb, or is she hope is she going to stay in the hope? She's Airbnb for UK I Galaxy. Think, I think she is. The sure. last time I spoke to her, she was Airbnb and Airbnb. 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 Okay. She's right. staying in an Airbnb, basically. Yeah, I'm just inventing words as we go along. All right. So, Chloe, have you had training with Maria before, or will this be the first time? No, I've never had training with anyone. I've just kind of gone at it. She's like, oh, honey. Yeah. Good for myself. <laughs> no, but this year, I mean, I moved systems last year and I competed in Galaxy for the first time as a teen and I absolutely mm. loved it. But I watched my video back and I just thought this year, if I'm, you know, I entered really late last year, eight weeks before the final. This year I entered straight away. I had a full year to prepare. I was like, I cannot let myself go in feeling like I've not given it my all. So mm. I've attended as many as events as I can. I've done my own fundraising and supported others at the same time. And then I just thought, I can't let myself down by thinking, what if I'd have just had that experience of training? Um, and I've heard so many girls say so many like wonderful things and great feedback that I just thought, what an opportunity to miss out on. So I didn't want that. So I just thought, book in straight away and get to know Maria as well, because it's so hard. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's hard to when because obviously I live in Nottingham. It's a two three hour drive to Manchester, so it's quite hard to go to events up there all the time, um, with funds and the travel and having to stay over. So I just thought I want to make sure I can meet as many people this year and experience as many different opportunities as I could. So I thought training with Maria and going to events such as like the Pageantland Ball was a great opportunity. So this year I'm going all out. So I is this your first time competing I as a... Sorry, so, sorry say that again, Lauren. I said I always feel like training is necessary. You don't want to put all that hard work into exactly. it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then it gets mm -hmm. to the on stage or the interview portion and you've done all these appearances, raised all this money for charity, and you get on stage or in interview and there's you maybe don't feel as confident as you, as you yeah. do or maybe what you think you're doing right is not necessarily yeah. what is the right thing i mean there is no wrong mm. thing but you know there's always ways to improve and really yeah. think outside the box even i'm still learning things now and you yeah. know it, it, it's every day like but that's why i trained with as many people as i possibly could and speak to as many people mm. because you are learning new things as you go along definitely yeah um so chloe that's what i was going to ask is, is this your first time actually competing as a miss at galaxy yes but previously I competed in Miss England. So since the age of 16, I've been competing as a Miss because Miss England right. obviously didn't okay. have a junior category or anything like that. It's just Miss England. So I've always, I always say to people, you know, they don't think I am my age. They always think I'm older. And I think that is because I've competed in a system for so long where I had to act as old as everyone else mm -hmm. in, a sort of, yeah. in a sort of fashion. So I had to be make myself look like I was older I had to present myself in that sort of way so 
I mean, like Danielle said to me um, at the weekend, I've never seen you as a teen. I've always seen you as a miss. And yeah. I do feel like I fit in that category better. Mm. So already I was more confident in going in this year. Yeah. Uh, Danielle, how is all your preparation going? you got your training coming up with Maria as well. Yeah. Yep, I do. I'm very excited for that. Um, I haven't practiced at all this year, at all. Other than walking down the street and doing the other little <laughs> strut here and there, um, I haven't practiced walk at all. So, and I know that Maria wanted me, because last year I overtrained. Last year right. I kind of was always in, whenever there was a mirror, I was there, you know, practicing my walk. And she was just like, look, don't, Great bad habits, just you know, come in and we'll we'll go for your walk. Mm -hmm. Um, so this year I have laid off walking, and so I'm nice, fresh, ready to take it all in when I go and training with Maria. Um, appearances, I mean, I, I might have a few more, but you know, I'm not mm -hmm. going to kill myself over it. Mm. Um. Mm. But that's something that's as not... much as possible. You need all your yeah. energy to go in. Yeah. And, that's, <laughs> and that's why I took a few days off before the pageant as well, just so I can get a lot yeah. of sleep, um, maybe get a massage, wind down, mm. chill out of the hotel. Um, because I know that I have been traveling up and down the country a lot. I have, you know, yes. obviously been working. I've got a new job now. So, um, Working and being still being in training mode and learning as well is quite exhausting. Um, but I do have a few more appearances, but it's just built in me to just mm. do a lot. You know, I, I don't like mm. to have, I, I always think having a duvet day is a waste of a day. Um, I think it is necessary sometimes, so but I don't, I don't I like to let myself day. rest. <laughs> Yeah. I've heard this expression before, duvet day. Yeah, I just, I think it's a bit of a waste of a day, to be honest. Yeah. Unless you're sharing it with yeah. someone and that's all cute and all. Like, if you've got a partner and you can have, like, <laughs> do cute things and eat cute food and watch cute Netflix series together. All, all that couples do. <laughs> all that. Um, but for me, I like to just get up and get in the car and go somewhere, get out of London. As much as I love London, I do like to get out of the weekends. Um, and what else? Oh, my interview and um, slash rehearsal wear has arrived. I haven't tried it on yet. My dad picked it up from the post office and it's his birthday today. So I'm really sorry, Dad, to make you go down to the post oh. office on your birthday. But he has Happy arrived. Happy birthday, Dad. So once this podcast is over, um, I shall be trying that on, on. That So hang on, is that the one from China? No. Is this it's, the one you said that... me? No. So I, yeah, oh, yes, it is the one I sent you. It's a ride, so I shall be trying that one after this. Okay. But that is the is only any, thing that I have. Any any news on the China one? <coughs> Every no. time I message them, I feel like I'm bugging them. Like I said to them, like, we were all good, and they said, like, no, we it's were It's very un-Chinese-like. Yeah. Um, I was like, oh, are you okay? I just want to check in you guys, you know. There's like, oh, we was affected by coronavirus, um, so it's put us a few days back. When is your wear day again? I was like, yeah. ask me when my wear day is, like I told you in the beginning when my wear day is. Um, but will they allow packages in from China? Yeah. That is something that I heard is a bit of a problem now. So there's yeah. a new phone they're releasing and now they can't because it was made in China and they're worried that it's going to contain coronavirus. Mm. So that might be an issue. Yeah. I'm sure Random. there's an issue because even the germs are still going to be on the on the parcels, aren't they? Oh. I suppose it depends how long the bacteria will survive for because I don't know if they know yeah. the genetic path of the... Yeah. Virus, it, I no. don't know whether to read the news or not. I was reading the news this morning because I wanted to, because apparently there's been a big corona outbreak in Italy. Yes. I think, I think 20 people, people so a lot of people passed away, and I think it was 200 people that were infected. So I was worried about the UK, obviously. Um, but, yeah, they were also talking about this phone that couldn't be released from China because they were worried it would contain coronavirus. Like the people who touched it had corona, so oh, wow. I don't know. Just spray them. But that's all. That's yeah. all now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, so apparently they are delayed with getting that to me. Um, and I said to them, look, this is my wear day. I told you this, but I'm traveling on the 11th, so I'd like it by the 9th, if any, like the, at latest. 
Yeah, um, of course. Ideally, I want it for this weekend for training, but I'm guessing it's not coming. Um, is this, what is this for you, fashion wear? Yeah. Fashion wear and a backup gown, a gown that I've been wanting to make for ages and I've had it made. Um, and I would have a headache right now, like a migraine and of face grass. Yeah, but at least it's not my on-stage gown. My on-stage gown is in the UK, but it's currently at the customs in Coventry, and it has been there for five days. So, yeah. Are you, you going to get hit with a customs charge then? Probably. But and, I really hope, and I really hope that she wasn't honest with the value of the dress, because that's a big oh. bill. Oh. Yeah. Um, this is but why it was cheaper for me to just fly to Thailand and pick up both my yeah. dresses and bring them back home. That's what Heather Heather did flying over to the States to pick up all her dresses so she wouldn't yeah. have to be hit because I think I think Lauren, you said one time that basically if you had paid all the customs tax, it basically would have been a flight anyway. So you might as well get a flight to pick up your stuff yourself and then you get a holiday yeah. into the bonus. So when I my handover gown that got sent over, that was hundred and fifty. Um, mm. just for shipping, so 150 for shipping, and then I had a custom Ouch. charge of 90 pounds, which my mother kindly paid for me. Thank you, mother. That's Thank you, Louise. 500 Australian dollars. That would be easily yeah. a nice little domestic holiday around somewhere yeah, here. So That's I just painful. decided this time it was two gowns. I'm just gonna fly out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I probably should have done that, or probably had like someone from america bring it over um yeah yeah it's one of those stories like it, it's gonna happen. <laughs> if it does happen it happens yeah it's just i don't know yeah. i do have i've what got backup fashion wears as well i've got backup so i'm all right um, yeah, but the the worst part of that, or the funniest part of that, was with the long message that I sent them. Like, look, I'm traveling on this day, I'm wearing it on this day, so I'd quite like to have it by this time. The message I got back was noted. I was like, ah, okay, I'm confident yeah, that this is going to come I, in I'm time. Not... I don't know who you're dealing with, Danielle, but it doesn't seem very Chinese. As I said, Chinese don't stop unless they're actually dead. So I'm not I'm not sure who you're dealing with, but it seems unusual to me. It's like we'll yes, see, we'll I see. know it's noted, but is it gonna be here on time? Like I know, right? I, I, I like that you've noted it. Great for that, but can you is it gonna be here on time? Let me know. Yeah. And every time I message them, I feel like I'm bugging them. They're like, Yes, your wear date is not until yeah. March. I'm like But it's, it's three March, weeks. Almost March. Yeah, and it's got to get through shipping, and apparently it's got to get through customs. So yeah, so but oh, wow. um, I'm sure if it doesn't, if it's not suitable, or it doesn't arrive on time, there'll be hell to pay on social media. Yeah, fear yeah. the wrath of Danielle. Feel the wrath if you're watching this. <laughs> I will out. I will out yeah, you. Yeah. You can send you can send them this clip, and then they'll probably say that the clip also is noted. <laughs> <laughs> You ran at them on social media, we, noted. We can't open this clip. It seems to have a virus. Yeah. Coronavirus. <laughs> I'm at least at least you've got backups. You'll you'll yeah. be fine even if the stuff doesn't um doesn't turn yeah. up. Yeah, just just um, money, you know. Just money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that age old issue um emma obviously you're not it's weird talking to you there when you're here but you're not preparing for uk galaxy if um no. if, if what if what you've been eating here is any any indication you're obviously not in preparation <laughs> yeah, for emma, uk have you galaxy all your gowns sorted and stuff like that like are they just no. all at home waiting for you to... no i'm stressed i think you. mum's making something yeah um, but just no fitting. You I'll think your it. mum so is? Well, I know she's making something. Right. <laughs> but nothing is sorted, organised. No nothing is <laughs> ready. <laughs> I've got like two days when I get back. Yeah. Well, the plan was I'd get back and I'd have two weeks to sort everything before Galaxy, and now I'm staying out here another nine days. Yeah, you screwed the plan <laughs> over, didn't I've you? I've got like three days maybe to get everything sorted. Yeah. But you've two got days, stuff two in weeks. Your What's the difference? You've got stuff oh, in your yeah, wardrobe I'll to be, wear just in case. I can, yeah. Yeah. I think opening numbers, the thing um, that I've not even remotely got sorted. But yeah, it will all be fine. 
Yeah, but um, you can wear anything for opening number. Like that's the good thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Holly's like, yeah, you know, queens wear whatever you want. Plan it amongst yeah. yourselves. Yeah, mm. and I don't know what I'm doing for swimwear either. But yeah, I've probably eaten my weight in banana bread since I've been here. Banana mm. bread, the Krispy Kremes, yeah, ice Tim cream, Tams. Tim Tams, lemon meringue pie. I needed to put on some weight though. This was the thing. I came back from Florida oh, and I think I lost an inch off my waist. Look great. Yes, Definitely. yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, she's a, the um and and some some we've had some some drinks, including Jaeger bombs, which you said <laughs> <laughs> we. She she wanted a night out. I didn't realize this. And you know when you've had a few drinks, like the wines and the the sensible stuff, and then when you're out there and you see the shots, you know that's always a bad idea. So yeah, this guy was getting all these shots. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. And I point at the shots and go, "That's a bad idea." And this one goes, "Or oh, is that the greatest idea ever?" And then orders us a couple of Jaeger bombs. I was like, "I did not see that one coming." <laughs> That was very unexpected. Like and you put it up on social, that's what... Yeah. I currently yeah. have an injury from a night of dancing to Beyonce, drinking tequila and whole garden rosé. And I have the biggest, like, two big bruises on one glass. Day. No, no, not in one glass. But, like, the glass is, like, the same oh. size as my head of the beer, the whole garden rosé. And I had seven of those. I didn't realize until the bill came at the end. How, did you lose count at one? <laughs> I mean, no, it was because like it was just like the drinks were flowing, we were dancing, like it was just a good night. Yeah, a good I, time. I was yeah. actually fine at the end of the night, but then I I made one of my friends do the tequila shots with me, and she wasn't fine. I think she got carried out by a boyfriend. What is it with you and tequila shots, really? It's so nice. You it's drink tequila nice. because of the taste? Yeah, I like tequila. Yeah, I really? do like it. Maybe I should give tequila a go. I've stayed away from tequila because I've always just thought it was a horrible... I mean, I can see you going like this. Yeah, it's a no from me. But... <laughs> you need good, you need good like tequila. Yeah. You need good tequila when it's smooth. Not I that hard right. I love a margarita. I don't mind a margarita, yeah. I was um, showing Danielle, because we've said I'm going to bring gin over, Australian gin, and when Emma and I were up at the Hunter Valley, we found this, um, the Hunter Distillery, if you want to look it up, and you can't get their stuff in the shops. You have to mail order it or go to their cellar door. And um, they sold this gin. We were, te we were trying out in test tubes, because obviously you can imagine if you have a shot of gin as a, as a taste, three or four tastings and you're going to be horizontal um unless you're like lauren and you probably be fine they would just be warming up but um, we were having it out of these test tubes and there's this purple one it's called mystery gin and i have this thing and it's purple and i drink it and i go that it doesn't taste like gin it's slightly sweet but it tasted really really familiar and then the woman who gave it to us goes orange tic tacs and i go Oh my God, that's actually it. It's a gin that tastes like orange Tic Tacs. And the thing is, it's also got a coloring, a natural coloring from a flower here that's a natural like acid or base indicator, like pH indicator. So when you mix it with tonic water, because that's acidic, the whole thing goes in and a cloud and it turns pink. So cool. It, it's the most, it's the strangest gin I've ever had. Um, the thing is, it tastes probably better straight because it just tastes like you're drinking orange Tic Tacs, which also wow. makes it exceedingly dangerous because you're drinking straight gin. Yeah. Party it, at Galaxy! Yes, well, hopefully after Friday, Danielle, yes, we can break <laughs> it out and then you can, um, you can have, have some of it. If anyone but, asks um, me why I've got a purple tongue on Friday... <laughs> <laughs> well, if you drink like orange juice or anything acidic, then you'll have a pink tongue. Oh, then no one will know. That's fine. I'll do that. I love it. Yeah. Orange, orange juice chaser. Yeah, um, but Emma, so you're doing handovers. So, do you have any immediate pageant plans after that, or are you going to take a break? Uh, I'll be going into my third year of uni, so my last year in October. So, I will probably be taking a break because any of the competitions that I would like to do, all of the internationals are between October and December. 
and in my third year, I don't think that's what is that to our a good idea. In October and December. Uh, I Literally all of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've what? How long have you been in pageantry for? Four years? Five. Um, years, five years. Five years in October, I think. Oh. And you've been both Miss Teen GB and Miss UK Galaxy, so you probably deserve a bit of a break. Thanks. It might, it might all be downhill <laughs> from there. You never know. Give someone else a chance. <laughs> exactly. It's like um, when I was interviewing Ashley <laughs> Ashley Wilde. I think she's competed in three pageants and she's won every single one. She's actually never lost. She's got a hundred percent record there. That one. That that that. And now I think she said she's done with pageants. So like she exits with a hundred percent win rate. Obviously, I'm not counting global because that's something else. Yeah. But um, yeah. Some of you guys, yeah, you need to move. It's like in tennis, you need these greats to disappear so someone else can have a chance. Each a banana oh, break. I'm not giving up anytime soon, so. Uh... But your, but your Lauren, like your your one, you said it's your last one, right? Yeah, it is. To be fair. So yeah. how's your preparation going? Good. Um, I had a call tonight to organise a radio interview. Um, so that will be March oh, 27th, sorry. along with another charity event that we've got planned, which is a night of mediumship. So we have someone coming to do like a, a group reading where some spirits will come through and speak to people. Um, yeah, and I think that will probably be my last event now until the finals in April. Good. Yeah, yours is creeping up now. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. I've been so focused on UK Galaxy. I, um, I've been I've been forgetting that yours is pretty soon after. Yeah, yeah. How how are you feeling about it? <laughs> um, good. Slight bit of pressure, but I won't crack yeah. under the pressure. I will just rise above it and enjoy my my experience. I feel like Eve. I did a lot in Thailand and it kind of took yeah. me, like it eased me into being back in pageants because although you're doing charity events, you're always doing those. But like it's like mm. photo shoots, getting my dresses. It's like, oh, it's all starting to all mm. come together. And then also yeah. I went to the orphanage and obviously just thoroughly enjoyed that. It was amazing. What was that like? Tell us more about that. That must have been emotional. Um, yeah, it would. Well, no one else had the treatment like I did. <laughs> I don't think anyone else, because I think that same day, two more people arrived with like shampoo, conditioner. Like they were just locals coming to drop things off. But mm. I got a full tour of the place, and they they're building like new things. And the, the older children that live there are actually learning trades with the people that are building there. So for them, it's like good that they can learn those things, and then once they turn eighteen, um, they have to then leave, and they're kind of classed as an adult. So they kind of yeah. get the old children ready for adult life. So they'll teach them skills that they can then use to go and live in maybe another province, and um, you know, have a job. Um, they grow all their own vegetables, have their own animals on site, which obviously they, wow. they eat. They just rely on donations solely. Like, that's what they do. And mm. I didn't realize how much stuff they actually needed. So I went and visited their library. They have got tons of school supplies, but pencils and pens only last so long. Um, yeah. So it was good that I was able to take those over there and obviously some of the English books. And there was a little girl and she was like, I could, like she said in Thai, like she could do the alphabet in English. Um, so Aww. she did it for me and I did it with her. And then their teacher was like, can you say it again? And can you let me record it? Because they weren't, there was some like pronunciations they weren't getting right. So it was like right. good that I was able to record it for them and help them out. And at least they've got that. And now I really, really want to get into and do my TEFL course, which means I can go and teach English out there. So I think that yeah. will probably be my my sole bit of work um, when I do decide to move to Thailand mm. to teach English there. But it was honestly amazing. And the kids are so lovely. And like I, I was like dead like nervous and sweaty and clammy because like meeting them for the first time, I was like, oh, God. And then this girl just like grabbed my hand and she was like, let's go. <laughs> 
That's, that's this mean because we were talking about accents before if you end up so they've got your voice on record and let's say you go over there teaching does that mean we're going to get a whole bunch of yeah we we should have sent someone else over like someone like an olivia with with and then you have a whole generation of ties <laughs> with scott scottish Scott accents, accents. <laughs> they'd, be, they'd all be there like wee bit <laughs> that would be in their vocabulary is me <laughs> oh dear me but that must have been an amazing, amazing yeah. feeling, getting out there was. and doing that. It really, really was. Yeah. Uh, and, and then now when, you're back when, in... I, when we like brought them Thai desserts, like they all came running and was like. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're back in the sunny UK. Yeah, now I'm back in the cold weather, and I just want to go back. <laughs> There, there seems to be a common theme that people in the UK want to go places that have warmer weather, and I, I can't blame you. They just want to be anywhere but the UK. <laughs> yeah, although <laughs> Thailand was a little bit scary for like the whole time I was there because there was constantly shootings happening, and I was like, oh my god, am I going to get shot? Why, why were there shootings? Is that just what happens? No, I, well, I don't know. I think there's a, a current situation in Thailand with the tourism because obviously they haven't got the Chinese going to the country to spend money. So everyone's right. kind of a bit uh, going. Yeah. yeah, so there was a mass shooting. Um, Is that the one that you world. sent me? In the mall? Yeah, so there was a mass That's shooting. Crazy. And basically what had happened is the press were... Um, releasing Facebook videos and statuses of where people were hiding because it went on for hours and hours and hours. Like, I think it was about 20 hours or something like that. So the press were constantly releasing, like, people hiding in refrigerators. So the shooter ha had someone's phone and was seeing where Why? they were hiding and going and shooting Why them. on earth would they release where people are hiding? Exactly. So now the press are being sued for obviously releasing the hiding places of these people. What a it was how ridiculous. stupid can you be? Honestly, it was it was awful, and you know, just seeing the videos that people were posting because obviously, like, social media is a is a huge part of it for people to like mm. like people know that they're safe, and like they were going live and all the videos that were popping up and off from the newspaper articles were awful. And then there was another one where it was just a guy just shooting. He didn't shoot anyone though, but he was just outside the mall, like scaring people, firing his gun. And then there was another one where it looked like an organised hit on someone and yeah. he just walked into her place of work. Three people like sat on one side of the room, mm. her behind the desk, ignored everyone else and just shot her three times. I was like, what is going on with this place? So it was, yeah, wow. like tensions were pretty high in, in Thailand as I was there. So it wasn't, um, didn't feel like it was as safe as it, it was once before. But hopefully yeah. the country will settle down and, you know, the tourism will be back up there once coronavirus is sorted. Yeah, well, hopefully this whole corona... I, I heard somewhere in the news that Australia was trying to come up with some sort of cure for it. I don't know how successful they've been. But, um, yeah, it seems that it's it's getting worse, this corona thing not getting better. It's spreading spreading around the world i don't really want to read the news about it because i'm they they like using shock tactics and scaring people that's how they sell stuff yeah. but it yeah. also does seem to actually be spreading which is very concerning it's now in italy and i'm just hoping and praying it doesn't get to the uk for, obviously for my own selfish well, reasons in the uk we haven't had anyone yeah. die of it yet but it has hit the uk mm. yeah so the fingers thing is, crossed people are saying to me, lauren you should be going to get tested i'm like i've read the nhs website unless you're showing any of the symptoms you mm. don't need to go and get tested yeah could you be a carrier of it though yeah i i, I think i could be because then you I wouldn't have the symptoms but but yeah. surely they would quarantine everyone coming everyone. in like yeah. they wouldn't have let me because in straight back into the yeah. country without any like advice leaflet or something or mm. like immigration mm -hmm. ha obviously have a duty of care don't they to allow mm. tourists yeah. back into if it was that yeah. much of a high risk clearly government would have put out some information leaflets this is what you need yeah. to do they wouldn't yeah. just yeah. say hey go back into normal life <laughs> Yeah, you yeah. thought they'd have taken more precautions flight, if that was the like, case. I've got tonsillitis, and the flight attendant was like, you don't have a fever, do you? 
<laughs> that's where people can start getting a little bit crazy and everyone there's people who can start thinking they have it when they don't so you do have to be that's why i don't want to read the news too much but i also want to know i want to be aware yeah. but not paranoid and it's a very sort of fine line but, and everyone like the people that are dying of coronavirus have underlying illnesses or they get pneumonia yeah. from it so it's not actually the coronavirus that's killing them <laughs> Yeah, but see, that's what the news likes to say because that's how you sell newspapers by being sensationalist and being being the bringer of doom. So, um... although although the guy that did discover it, he was young, not pregnant, and not elderly. But did he really die of coronavirus, or was he bumped off? Mm -hmm. Get into politics now. <laughs> That's a very dangerous area to start treading in, in pageantry. Oh, was the I know, coronavirus right? invented by scientists to reduce the population in China? Hmm. I, I, I heard in the in news that Australia has, because it was something to do with, was it the person was discovered covered in bat blood or something? Like how it started? It was, it was something, this virus is something you can only get from interacting with animals. I think it's one it's another one of those sort of semi strange weird viruses and I think they they found the person like ground zero and it was all cut it was someone who had been covered in animal blood or had been working with animals but look anyway let's just hope it all all goes away and that no more yeah. lives are lost um let, let's wrap this up uh Chloe what have you got coming up between now and UK Galaxy uh my pageant PJ party <laughs> Training with Maria, and then a few. We're going to be volunteering at the British Heart Foundation because that links with my platform, all about heart awareness. And then just relaxing and prepping myself, ready for competition. Nice. Sounds good. Definitely get plenty of sleep, a yeah. nice facial massage. <laughs> you need a spa day to prepare. You paying, Lauren? Oh. No. Yeah. <laughs> you were all at home. A spa day at home? Yeah, just lay in the tub. Like, <laughs> lay, in the, lay in the tub and then get, you know, get your cat to walk on your back. That's a massage right there. It's all good. Um, what, about, what about you, Emma? What have you got coming up between now and UK Galaxy? Um, I leave Sydney on Saturday be in Brisbane and Gold Coast at Australia Galaxy Pageants. Then fly back, rush to get everything ready, and then drive up to Galaxy. <laughs> that sounds oh, like a no. good plan. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. Lauren, what have you got coming up over the next week? I'm working nonstop. You know, you can't have this time off and not graft after it. So yeah. I think... I'm working now up until the 6th, and then I go back to normal rotor in work. So I'm just working nonstop. Right. Yeah, and nothing exciting planned. Other than your interview. Yeah, but that's not until the end of March. Oh, right. So everything that's coming up is going to be, like, more towards the end of the month. So we've got Galaxy right. to look forward to and all that good stuff. But just working yeah. now. That'll tie you over. Do they? Do they have to keep? Do they have tequila at UK Galaxy? We just say at work uh, then. <laughs> I need it over. No I'm joking. Um, I, I think they might. They have a bar. Yeah, they have some behind have the bar. Tequila. I'll have to share a shot with you. You can introduce me to the wonderful world of tequila since you're not actually yeah, competing. So. Have a shot each. I don't share. I was going to say. <laughs> I end up with you. With you coming back now, I'm not going to be sharing a shot with you. No, nothing personal, but just given what you said, I'd be like, I'll, I'll have my own shot. Thanks very much. There um, go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The tequila might actually help with that because alcohol is a disinfectant. So, you know, yeah. maybe That's tequila is good for you. Yeah, that's how you're so healthy, the, the tequila shots. No, I had, my, I had my hand sanitizer and my mask on the whole time. Oh, I thought you were, I thought you were about to say you drunk hand, hand sanitizer. <laughs> I was like, that's, that's not a good idea. <laughs> okay. That's um, a sign of alcoholism, so um, no. And, t and, and doing a podcast when you're drunk is not a sign of alcoholism? Right, who did that? 
Don't know, is that you? <laughs> As if. Sorry, I can't remember. <laughs> I think that's a sign of alcoholism too. Uh, anyway. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's so funny because the very first podcast, we identified that you would be the, well, the girls identified that you would be the worst one to get drunk with. <laughs> And I feel like that that that's been a prophecy now. That's just been proven true. After my dance moves, when I had a drink, I am not the worst person to get drunk with. Just don't stand too mm. close. Why? <laughs> you <don't> <laughs> your dance moves. <laughs> I'll catch a hand in the eye. Will I? Are you a violent dancer? No. I'm just a good dancer. My, my moves will come out at Galaxy, okay? You'll see them then. When we had our night out in Sydney, Emma saw some very interesting dance moves from a um, a lovely guy um, who was probably gay. We don't know. But he was... How would you describe his dancing? Provocative. Oh, okay. He was dancing in front of another guy who looked very, very uncomfortable. And this... <laughs> This guy was twer was he twerking? Adrian, he was example? grinding. Can you get up and do a demonstration for us, please? Oh no, Adrian's <laughs> dance moves with the cockatoo. This, <laughs> this, was, I this is someone I've got. This is <laughs> all I'm going to be doing. And UK then Galaxy. our Australian dance moves that we came up with. Yes, yes. We'll, we'll have the cockatoo and the kangaroo. I mean, I, I can demonstrate the cockatoo. Do you want to show them the kangaroo? Probably not here. It'll be. It'll make a lot of noise. We also need to take Adrian to an alchemist because there aren't any like fancy theatrical kind of bars or anything in yeah. Australia. We went to one, but it wasn't. That you know the bar, the bars that sort of do the fancy drinks, and there's not liquid nitrogen here and fire going on there. That's something oh, that I've been yeah. looking for oh, yeah. in Sydney. Yeah. Alchemist. Yeah. The yeah. Centre, I think. yeah. So that that'll be a good go. a good night out. Yeah. Um, Singe your eyebrows off. Can we catch an Uber? Are there Ubers out there? We can't do Ubering. Yeah, you can do Uber. Okay. Uber or just uh, regular taxis. Okay. It may be fun if no one needs to be the designated driver. Uh, Danielle, what have you got coming up for the next week? Um, other than work and and. Jimming, I will be following Chloe around. <laughs> so a PJ party and then on to training of Maria. And then um potentially I haven't booked it yet, but Kevin Sandland does a zip line. Um and I've been wanting to do it for a very long time, and every single time it seems to fall on a date that doesn't really work for me. Mm -hmm. Um and it's happening on Sunday, I believe. So Depending on the funds, um, I might have to buy a last minute ticket to that because I've always wanted to do it. So it's it so does look so fun. much fun. Yeah, I, I've been looking. I was looking on the website today at it, and there are. Mm -hmm. I think there's still some spaces available. So um, that might be a last minute job. So I'm really sorry, Kevin. That kind of left you in the dark about that one. But I kind of been looking at the finances and I. Was, I still don't know if I can afford it or not because it's quite quite a spenny one. Um, mm -hmm. But I do. Really... Pounds. No, it's a hundred pounds. Ninety-five. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I but thought I want... it was only like fifty when I did it, or maybe seventy-five. Maybe, mm. maybe that was an early bird price. I don't know wow, if this is a different okay. one or. Um, but I have wanted to do it for a while. And if there's a big group yeah. going, that'd be really fun. Yeah. But we we shall see. That's a TBC. Um, and then yeah, that's about it. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, sounds like we're all sort of coasting along until we get to UK Galaxy. So um, I guess that's the big one. How how far out is it now? Is it even three weeks now? Is it less than three so weeks? It's, it's Two, week, two weeks, two weeks on Friday. Wow. Okay, that's just a whole, <laughs> a whole lot, up. a whole lot of different faces just happened when we said two <laughs> weeks. <laughs> you see some pain, some anxiety, some excitement, a whole, a whole range of it. All right. Okay. Well, wow. we'll have to work out some something that we're doing at UK Galaxy. Maybe we can do some sort of stream from there live, probably before Lauren has her tequila. 
Oh, what? I know, I'm not drinking it, Galaxy. I'm driving. <laughs> <laughs> that face says otherwise. This is this is why I think we should Uber and <laughs> not drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Uber just across the road. Just Uber, or you can walk oh, through the fields. Walk I don't in know. Heels. Walking in heels and tequila bring, shots. Bring some welly boots. Bring some welly boots. Wellies. <laughs> <laughs> Down on wellies, it's a new thing. Do I look um, like a girl that owns a pair of wellies? I have wellies, I wear wellies on a daily basis. I definitely don't I have wellies. Where are my wellies? Yeah, I've got... I have trainers and heels and no in-between because I'm either a really, really casual or a really dressed up person. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll work it out at UK Galaxy, but I don't think you should be driving. I think you should have some fun. I, I want to see you having some fun yeah. because I'm now curious. <laughs> Just as to exactly what happens on a night out with Lauren Parkinson. <laughs> you look slightly worried. I might film it and just create a small documentary about it afterwards, assuming that I survive, which I may not. Like a deep Attenborough. So this is Lauren on her first drink. Watch <laughs> how the pupils change. <laughs> Can you just a wild. Parkinson. <laughs> how, how how would David Attenborough narrate your dancing though? That's what I'm. Um, is that like a it, describe it's it as like a mating call dance. or? <laughs> <laughs> and then what That's about when he's passed out horizontal? <laughs> oh dear. Okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna call up David. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna. I'm gonna create. Okay, here, here's the deal. Uh, Lauren does a tequila dance, and you guys have to teach us the uh, the kangaroo. Yeah, I think they <laughs> them. Oh no, they we're both. back. Yeah, okay. Adrian can teach you the cockatoo and the kangaroo. You can teach them the kangaroo. You you, you make a much better kangaroo than I do. We need the quokka as well, especially after a we Jager need bomb. The you need the like the are really cute. cute little faces. You have to go. They do look like rats, though. You said that yesterday. Yeah, the meerkats. I also like the meerkats. The yeah. meerkats are really cute. They're, they're all, you know. Yeah, the quokkas are just like a cross between a guinea pig and a rat, I think. Yeah. But they're really cute. Anyway, okay. So, let's leave it there. Lauren's about to pass out. Keeping you up. Oh, she's jet lagged, so we should let her go. All right, um, let's leave it there. Thank you, Chloe, for your time. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me again. That's all right. And thank you, Emma, for your time. Thank you for having me on. You're going to go back to sleep now. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Uh, and <laughs> thank you, Lauren and Danielle. I'll, I'll be seeing you guys very soon. Um, and Danielle, I'll send you my flight details. And then if you want to catch up early in the morning, then... That would work too. Not not that I don't want to see Lauren's dentist, but I might prefer hanging out with Danielle to hanging out in a dentist waiting room. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's only like two minutes in the dentist. Just file a few teeth down and we're done. Filing your teeth down? Yeah. I don't want to be around when that happens. I'll just smell burning and hear horrific sounds. These, these two. Oh. Oh, and dear. I actually chipped the tooth yesterday. I was running upstairs and eating at the same time. And my, you know, when you like chew on an overbite or an underbite or something, and I chipped mm. my back tooth. So I need to speak to Zara about that too. Are oh. oh, you actually going to Zara? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my dentist. So if anyone wants any dental work in the Manchester area or just want to travel, hit up Zara. Zara. I I had a weird food related accident yesterday. We'll finish on this. <laughs> um, oh God. So oh, Emma, knows. Uh, Emma knows the outcome of this. I, I have a Nutribullet and I make green smoothies every day. And one of the things I put in is frozen raspberries. But there's been a problem with the frozen raspberries here because I think my, Rasp my supermarket... Raspberries. 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 Um, raspberries. Yeah. And they've, if you imagine frozen ones being defrosted and then beginning to melt and then refrozen, 
the whole bag becomes a solid ice block and if you want to put it in a green smoothie you can't break the bits off i can't i can't put the whole bag in so i wanted to test whether the frozen raspberries were actually separate don't shake your head or one solid block and me i don't quite know what i was thinking as i said i've been coming off coffee I grab into the fridge, I grab this one 500 bag of frozen raspberries and I smack it on my head to, to, to see if it's, <laughs> to see if the raspberries were separate or not. And it wasn't, it was a solid block of ice. So I pick it up and go, bang. And I was like, ah, oh, that really hurt. So Emma, did, I, you, did you witness the, this? Yeah, well, I was you know like. There's a table that you can do that on. Well, or the or door, that, uh, but he was just, huh? just smashing raspberries against his head. <laughs> I, oh, it hurt. Um, I think you enjoyed that. Um, well, you then just walked around being like, oh, my head hurts. Is there a new virus <laughs> going around like... called, like, stupidity or something? No, that's just me. I, I am completely yeah. insane. Are you okay? And don't worry, it's not contagious. Of course I'm not okay. Does that make sense into you? No, no, no not quite. What little there was, it's it's gone. So I'm now coming in for UK Galaxy Hot after smashing my head with frozen raspberries. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, and actually now that I think about it, my head still hurts. So, all right, let's leave it on that note, that highlight. I'm going to thank everyone for watching, and um, we'll speak to you next time. Hey guys, it's Adrian again. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and remember to head over to pageantlaunch.com and join the launch team for our pageant review site. All you need to do is put in your email address. Thanks and uh, speak to you next time.